Hey YouTube, welcome back to my object-oriented TypeScript series. In this video, we'll be going over objects in depth and getting a better understanding of the mental model you should have when working with JavaScript. So when people first start coding, a lot of people get introduced to the idea that when you create variables, you place values inside these boxes. So there's like a name, there's a box called name and we shove the value Mario uh, inside the, the name box. But when you're working on the JavaScript, there is a better mental model for you to work with that's taught by Dan Abramov from Facebook and his course is called Just JavaScript. And if you want to go more in depth with what I'm about to talk about, then I suggest for you to check out that course. I'm just going to give a brief overview of what I learned from Just JavaScript. But yes, instead of thinking of the idea that name is a box and you place Mario inside that box, think of it as name is like a pointer. And we wire up the name pointer to the value Mario. So we can do the same thing with let's say speed and we want to do one and we wire up speed to one. And we can do the same thing with a Boolean. So is invincible, is true. Here, because this variable name is called name, I think the window library is exporting it. So I'm just going to add this line to export uh, something from this file. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. So in JavaScript, we have different types of values. We have strings, we have numbers, we have booleans, and then variables, we wire up variables to point to these values. So if I had another variable called has fire ability, and I set this to true, we are not creating another true value and putting and wiring that up with has fire ability. There's only one true value in JavaScript. And because of that, when we execute this line, has fire ability gets wired up to the true value, the, the one true value in JavaScript. So both is invincible and has fire ability point to the same value, which is true. So that's the mental model that you should have when working with primitives. And when you work with objects, it's it's similar. It builds on top. So from the previous video, let's say we had a class called player modeling players in Mario game. We have name and health and is invincible. Is invincible could be a boolean to check if the player is invincible from eating a star or something in the game. And we'll have an object called Mario and we'll instantiate the object, the player object with new. And what happens is that we have the Mario variable again, you can think of it as a pointer, and we wire it up with the right hand side with an object. So an object is floating in space, in the space called the heap. And what the heap does is store all of the objects in a in JavaScript for us. So when we set Mario.name with the dot operator, what we're doing is saying, okay, we want to access the Mario object. So we're going to follow the wire pointed. We're going to follow the wire from Mario. And then once we access the dot operator, we're now inside the object. So if I want to set dot name, dot name is another variable inside the player object inside of Mario. So when I set Mario.name, we're going to wire up another variable and we're going to set that to the value Mario. We can do the same thing for the health and also is invincible. So as you can see from the diagram, Mario is an instance of player. Player was a blueprint. It was instructions for TypeScript to figure out what sort of information the player object has. And when we when TypeScript comes across this line, what happens is we create a new object and we wire up Mario to that. And then when we have the dot operator, we go down, we follow the chain of wires essentially. And we know that the Mario points is wired up to the Mario object floating in the heap. And when we access the dot operator, we are then in the object and we can access the objects variables. And it's a recursive like nature. Then we, we wire up name to Mario, 
health to 10 and is invincible to true. So this is why we call these variables instance variables because these variables live on the instance of the Mario object. We can create another player called Peach. And Peach will have her name set. Whoops. Her health, let's say, will be 8 out of 10. And she is not invincible. And this object has a different set of instance variables. The instance variables live on the Peach object, and they point to different values than the Mario object. To make the point clear between variables and values in JavaScript, we can set Peach, Peach's is invincible property, instance variable, to true. And this points to the same value that Mario's is invincible property instance variable points to, which is true. So they point to the same value, but they're different variables that live on different instances of the player class. We have the Mario object and the Peach object. And to show you how an instance variable in an object can point to anything, let's say we can have a crush, which is another player. So this crush should be a player type. So we can set right here, after we're done creating the players, we can set Mario's crush to Peach. And what this does is it goes to the Mario, Mario variable, and then it follows where the variable is wired to. So we now we get access to the Mario object, and then we now access the crush instance variable on the Mario object, and we wire that to Peach. So then if we wanted to go down the line of follow the line of wires, crush, you can see that all of these now, when, when I ask the dot operator, all of these now are Peach's instance variables. So I can get Peach's name. So let's say I wanted to log this, that would work. So now that you have a better mental model of how JavaScript works, we can reason about object-oriented programming better. We know that these any class has instance variables, and that's what the class knows. It's its state because it's the state of a class, state of an object. And we also know that it does things. It has actions. That's its behavior. So let's say we wanted to make a greet method on the player class, and we can say console.log hello world. So then I can call Mario dot greet and peach dot greet. Let's open up the terminal. And then we want to compile. And then run it. Whoops, what happened? I did not run the JavaScript. So we get hello world. With the whole point of creating classes and objects is that its behavior has access to its instance variables, right? So when we call mario.greet, when greet gets called, it's this value is whatever is to the left of the dot operator. So greet is called and then it console.logs, hello, my name is this dot name. And then we look up what this is. So then we look to the left of the of the dot operator and we see that this is a variable called Mario. So then we follow the Mario wire to this to this object living in the heap. And then once we have that object, that object, this points to that object. It's wired up to that object. And then we can just use this like we're talking about Mario. So then it, it's this dot name and Mario will get printed out. So let's see that. If we compile again and run it, whoops, whoops, we see that even though there's one player class, we get different behavior for both of the objects. Hello, my name is Mario, and hello, my name is Peach. So each instance, Mario, with the Mario instance and the Peach instance of the player class, has the same greet has the same methods, but 
because it has different instance variables, then the behavior of Mario and Peach are different. We get dynamic behavior. So now you have a better understanding of what objects really are. Objects are an instance of their specific classes, right? We have the player class, which is a blueprint, and each object has instance variables that are specific to that object because these objects are different and they live on the heap. They have the same methods. So every, uh, every player object has the same greet method, but because the object has different instance variables, we are logging out different behavior. We have different behavior. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you in the next video.